All right, so in this equation, I have three to the power of x to the power of three over nine to the power of x is equal to 81. So to solve this, I'm gonna first write nine as three squared. So I get three to the power of x to the power of three over three squared to the power of x is equal to 81. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 3 to the power of x to the power of 3 over 3 to the power of 2 times x, so 3 to the power of 2x, is equal to 81, I'm going to rewrite as 3 to the power of 4. So now notice how I have everything in the base of three. So this is going to make it much easier to solve. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So three to the power of x to the power of three over three to the power of two x is going to equal three to the power of x to the power of three minus two x, which is equal to three to the power of four. And now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So x to the power of 3 minus 2x is equal to 4. And now if I subtract 4 on both sides, I get x to the power of 3 minus 2x minus 4 is equal to 0. Now we have an equation here, and this isn't a regular quadratic equation because we have a power of three here, and we have a missing power of two. We don't have a power of two. So to actually solve an equation like this, what we have to do is we have to test out values, and then once we get a value that works out, we have to use that one value to find all the remaining values that are solutions to the equation. So let's first start out with one. If x is equal to one, then I get one to the power of three minus 2 times 1 minus 4, which does not equal 0. Now if x equals 2, I get 2 to the power of 3 minus 2 times 2 minus 4. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. 8 minus 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 minus 4 is 0. So this does equal 0. So 2 is a solution. To be more precise, x equals 2 is a solution, meaning x minus 2 is equal to 0. So now what we're going to do is we're going to divide x minus 2 with x to the power of 3 minus 2x minus 4. So I get x to the power of 3 minus 2x minus 4 over x minus 2. And to solve this, we're going to have to use synthetic division. And if you guys don't know what that is, I would recommend watching a YouTube video on it. So our coefficients of our numerator is 1, negative 2, and negative 4. And then we have a 2 over here. I'm going to bring down 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 2 times 0. Oops, sorry, I actually did something wrong. We should have a 0 in here because, remember, we have a power of 2. So because there's no power of 2 here, we just put a 0. Now, if we bring down 1, we get 2 times 1, which is 2. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 2, time, negative 2 plus 4 is 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So we have a remainder of 0. And we get x squared. Our coefficient is 1 plus 2x. Coefficient is 2 plus 2 at the end. So I get x squared plus 2x plus 2 is equal to this. And this also means that x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 2 is equal to 0. So for this equation, I get x minus 2 is equal to 0, and x squared plus 2x plus 2 is equal to 0. For x minus 2 equals 0, x is obviously equal to 2. And we already got this solution before, so this is no surprise. Now for x squared plus 2x plus 2 equals 0, to solve this, we have to use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. 
So I get x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 2, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. And now this is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus a, which is negative 4 over 2, which is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 times negative 1 over 2, which is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 2i. Square root of negative 1 is the same thing as i over 2, which is the same thing as negative 1 plus or minus i. So my three solutions to the equation are x equals 2, x is equal to negative 1 plus i, and x is equal to negative 1 minus i. All right, so in this equation, I have x to the power of 4 plus x squared is equal to 20. So to solve this, what I'm going to do is first start by subtracting 20 on both sides. So we can have all our terms on one side. So I get x to the power of 4 plus x squared minus 20 is equal to 0. Now this may seem like a quadratic equation, but it's not because we have the power of 4 as our primary term, and then that's led by the power of 2. And in a normal quadratic equation, we have 2 as our primary, then we just have 1, and then we have some constant c. So how are we going to solve this? Well, we can't use the, we can't factor this out by using the quadratic formula because this is not a quadratic equation. So to solve this, what I'm going to do is rewrite this as x to the power of 4 plus x squared minus 16 plus 4. So I rewrote, rewrote 20 as 16 plus 4. And the reason I did this is because negative 16 is the same thing as negative 2 to the power of 4. And negative 4 is the same thing as negative 2 squared. So now notice how I have something in the power of 4 and something in the power of 2. And they're both the same. Now I can put the powers of 4s together and the powers of 2 together. So I get x to the power of 4 minus 2 to the power of 4 plus x squared minus 2 squared is equal to 0. Now, 2 to the power of 4 is 16, and 16 is the same thing as 4 squared as well. So I get x to the power of 4 minus 4 squared, and I have this plus x squared minus 2 squared. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of 4 is the same thing as x to the power of 2 times 2, which is equal to x to the power of 2 to the power of 2. So now I get x to the power of 2 to the power of 2 minus 4 to the power of 2 plus x squared minus 2 squared is equal to 0. Now notice how everything is in the power of 2. And if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So we're going to use this property on these two groups. So I first get x squared plus 4 times x squared minus 4 plus x plus 2 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now we can use this property again on x squared minus 4 by rewriting as x squared minus 2 squared. So that's going to equal x plus 2 times x minus 2. And I have this plus x plus 2 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now I'm going to factor out x minus 2. So I get x minus 2 times x squared plus 4 times x plus 2 plus x plus 2. which is equal to 0. And notice how we can also factor out x plus 2 as well. So, actually, at the start, what we could have done is just factored x squared minus 4 out. But now we're going to factor out x squared x plus 2 as well. 
So I get x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x squared plus 4 plus 1 is equal to 0. So x plus 2 times x minus 2, like I said, was x squared minus 4. And I have this times x squared plus 4 plus 1, which is x squared plus 5. Now this is equal to 0. Now this gives me two equations. I get x squared minus 4 is equal to 0, and I get x squared plus 5 is equal to 0. So for x squared minus 4 equals 0, I can add 4 on both sides. So I get x squared is equal to 4, and this is equal to positive or negative 2. And for x squared plus 5 is equal to 0, I get x squared is equal to negative 5, and I get x is equal to positive negative square root of negative 5, which is equal to positive negative square root of 5i.